All right, welcome back to another episode of The Untamed Life. It's Christine Jewell. And today I'm going to share some stories. I'm going to share a story of a couple days that I went through last week that felt like I was in the middle of a cosmic boxing match. (laughs) And how do we navigate maybe those days, those weeks, those months or seasons where we feel like it's just one thing after another, after another, and, you know, when and how do we pick up the lessons and the gems and what insights are coming through for us? Because sometimes it can just feel like, man, Anything and everything that's going wrong (laughs) is right now, right? We've heard these things like when it rains, it pours. And we have all of these psychological constructs, these collective constructs and belief systems that we we get to be really careful of actually, because if all of a sudden we get broadsided with one thing and then another, it's very easy to slip into that consciousness, that way of thinking. And then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? So we've all experienced those tidal waves where it feels like just one thing after another. So I want to share a little bit of what came up for me last week, how I navigated some of these (laughs) battlefields and um, some insights that came out along the other side that I think will really help you. And I, I received a beautiful word from the spirit on the other side, because I do believe that God uses all things for good. And really every opportunity is sort of like training for us, right? We're in, we're these students in this, playing field, right? Called life. We're students on earth. We're learning how to navigate not only the physical, but the emotional, the mental, the spiritual. We're we're navigating, right? Multidimensional realms all the time. I hope that if you're listening to this podcast, you're not somebody who's just stuck in the physical all the time. Maybe you are and you're learning how to, you know, break free from that or start to have eyes that see beyond that. But as we start to go through these seasons where it's like, man, sometimes it feels like it's coming at us from every angle. You know, how are you growing through those challenges? How are you starting to show up different? So last week was interesting. I went away. I went away to the cabin in the mountains again. I love to go for these writing retreats. It really seems to be working for me right now. That could be another podcast all in itself is really honoring your own flow, your own flow state in this season of life, like what's working for you? What isn't working for you anymore, right? I'm noticing that less and less um, I'm wanting to spend time at a desk. Like I'm sitting here now doing this podcast, but I like to get in and get out. And I really am so sensitive to the different environments that I'm in when I'm working on different types of projects. Everything has energy. Everything has frequency. Everything has triggers, right? And it's easy to go, well, I'm just going to sit down and focus and hunker down and get things done. But how often does it feel like we're fighting against ourselves, right? So I've just been really in the season of honoring where my soul wants to go, when I want to write, when I want to create, I want to be with the spirit and have some quiet space, honestly, to myself without kids screaming or things to run around and do and interruptions. I just head west. (laughs) I head west to the mountains. And so I plan on going to Asheville for a few days and the leaves are changing here in North Carolina. It's just absolutely gorgeous this time of year. So I went out west and had a day with a girlfriend of mine. We went hiking, all that jazz. I spent a couple days in this beautiful cabin. And here's what was interesting. You know, I'm writing this chapters of the book, these chapters of the book that's coming out in 2023, hopefully early 2023. The book that I'm working on right now and a couple of the chapters in there are about understanding the nature of the battle and knowing the enemy tactics, right? Understanding how the enemy works um, to distract us, some of those tools and tactics. How do we move beyond the physical to actually see what's actually going on here that I can't see with my physical eyes? So I'm literally writing these two chapters over the past probably a couple of weeks. And isn't it interesting that, of course, I would get hit with all these <laughs> different challenges and you know, I was just feeling kind of down and then I was having trouble focusing and it was just a lot of disheartening things that started to happen. So of course it just completely aligned with what I was writing because I got to work through what I was writing about, which was seeing beyond just what's at hand, right? Seeing what triggers were coming up, how to engage differently. So I was out there, I was writing this, these two chapters and the last night before I was about to leave, I go outside and I thought, I'm going to go out for dinner tonight because, you know, I'm about to leave. I've been in this cabin the whole time and I walk outside and my tire is 
flat, right? At first I thought my tire got slashed, but I'm literally like way up on this mountain on a very steep hill. And I'm like, okay, I have a flat tire. I get to have a spare. I have a spare in here somewhere, I'm pretty sure. But there's no way I was gonna change it myself because of the angle of the hill. Plus I'm just not <laughs> that kind of person that changes her tires. Uh, I could, I have all the tools. I could probably swing it, but not on this incline. So I called AAA, they came out, they changed my tire and they put my little spare on. And I'm like, okay, I'm good to go tomorrow. And the guy says to me, you know, I would not drive four or five hours on this tire because I still had a, a good ways to head back home. He's like, go to the tire shop tomorrow and get it changed. And then my hubby said the same thing. So I'm like, cool. I wake up in the morning. I'm all set to travel back home. I have a date night planned with my husband that night and I'm driving home. I'm about an hour away and I pull over to the tire shop. Boom, boom, boom. Everything I need is always provided, right? So the guy changes my tire. I get in, it was pretty painless and I'm driving down the highway. And all of a sudden I see my key fob flying off the windshield down the road behind me and getting crushed by the cars flying behind me. So here I am driving my Acura down the road and I realized, okay, that guy just put my keys on the windshield. They were not inside the vehicle like I thought they were. And now I have no key to turn this car off or on with. So I proceed to make a U-turn because I know the minute the car stops, it's not turning back on. And I'm in the middle of this like super busy highway. And it was like right around a corner, like a four lane highway and or a four, four lane road and people were booking it. And I kind of stopped in the middle of the road to try to see if I can salvage whatever I can from the key fob because I do not have a backup. And um, needless to say, it was completely destroyed. So I slow down and all of a sudden the car stops. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm literally in the middle of the road right now. I'm in the middle of the highway, the cars are flying by. And I wasn't quite in the middle of the two lanes, but I was pretty close to the one edge. And so I just felt my heart racing and I was like, okay, God, <laughs> here we are. I ran over to the median so I could get out of the way because I just was anticipating something <laughs> going wrong. And within like less than a minute, probably a truck pulls in behind me and kind of is the protector right between my car and the oncoming traffic. And he stops this truck, which is a pretty big truck and he gets out and he is um, an EMS um, guy that has just gotten off work, right? So there's a paramedic that happens to just be getting off of his ship that happens to be like the first truck that pulls over to see how I'm doing. And before I can really explain much, he has already radioed in and there's two police officers that are like, boom, they're right there. And literally the police come by and I'm kind of explaining what's going on and trying to figure out what to do. And the tow truck is already there, right? So it was like, I couldn't even think really of what to ask for or what was needed, but they were right there. And so we get in the tow truck and there's nothing in this town that I was at. There was nowhere to go uh, like an Acura dealership or anything like that to get this key fob replaced. So I had to get towed back to Asheville, which was about an hour away. So I got to spend an hour in the truck with this tow truck driver. And I want to share a little bit about what he shared with me because, you know, Sometimes we can be like, oh, I got to like sit in the car with this guy and I'm heading in the wrong direction and all this stuff. But it was such a perspective shift for me. And, you know, this man talked the entire time as we were heading back to the dealership, just sharing like so many details of his life. And I find this a lot, you know, when I'm riding in an Uber or I'm in a tow truck or whatever, like people just want to share, share, share what's on their heart. I'll, I'll circle back to that in a moment, but he basically talks the entire hour um, to get us to the Acura dealership. And then when we get there, I walk in the door, I'm thinking, okay, we're going to get this car fixed. I'm going to be able to go home. I was feeling a little bit like, not traumatized, but a little bit in shock from earlier. I walk in and their Wi-Fi is down. So they do not have any way to look up parts or order parts or see if they have the parts in stock. And right away, the manager of the dealership runs out because I called on the way in and introduced himself and said, here, I'm here for you, whatever you need. 
figured out, you know, couldn't look at these parts. So he starts making phone calls. Long story short, they did not have the part in stock. Um, and I have a Canadian vehicle in the US. So that makes it a little bit trickier because they don't have the ability to read our VIN numbers here. <laughs> so here I am, we find out they do not have the part in stock. It's gonna be $500 per part, which I needed two of them um, to order and it wouldn't come in until the next day. And they didn't know if they were gonna be able to fix it and program it because it's a Canadian vehicle. So they didn't know if the computer was gonna to talk to the car. So I was just like, okay, so I'm gonna roll the dice here. I'm gonna spend 500 to $1,000 on these key bombs and we don't know. So I thought, whatever, I'll get a car, I'll go to a hotel or I'll go home and I'll relax for the night, right? And I'm, by this point, I'm like, okay. So the manager of the car takes me over and he's got a car lined up for me. He's already got a car lined up for me. We go over to the car rental place. He drives me over there. I hand the lady my driver's license. She looks at it and then she looks at me and says, oh babe, your driver's license just expired. <laughs> so here I am and I'm like, okay. My first tire was, you know, <laughs> flat. The key fob got destroyed. They don't know if they have the parts. They don't know if the parts are gonna be fixed. I can't drive anywhere. It was just like, I started laughing. I started laughing in the middle of the dealership. And I was like, okay what is up? Am I supposed to just be here today? Is there something I'm supposed to be learning? Am I supposed to be here for somebody else? And so the manager was still there with me. He said, no worries. I will be your driver. I will drive you wherever you want to go. So at this point, I just resigned. And I said, you know what, I'm going to get myself a nice hotel. I'm going to head to the hotel and I'm just going to cancel the rest of the calls for the day, take myself up for dinner, rest, recalibrate and see what happens tomorrow. And so that's what I did. I canceled the rest of the day. I went shopping. I had some good retail therapy, right? I, I it was interesting because on the way there, I said, I really want to upgrade my wardrobe. I was on the way to Asheville. I said that. And I said that to my girlfriend the first night I got there. Well, near the hotel where I stayed was all, like a couple of my favorite stores. So I got to upgrade my wardrobe. But here's the thing that was interesting, right? In the middle of it, it just kind of felt like, man, one more thing, one more thing, one more thing was coming at me. And I was able to laugh in the moment and just kind of be like, oh my gosh, really? <laughs> and just kind of keep letting things roll off, right? keep letting things roll off. It wasn't going the way I wanted it to go by any means. I had, I totally had other plans for how that day was going to go. I totally had other plans for how that money was going to be spent. I totally had other plans, but sometimes you just get broadsided or you get redirected or you get detoured. And in the past, I would have gotten really frustrated and irritated and probably said things like, oh, I'm so stupid or I'm this, I'm that. And, you know, when we can laugh about it and just kind of roll with it and just navigate and flow with the things, we never know what's opening up for us. And, and as I, you know, kind of worked out the rest of the day and then I got up and coached my clients, had my workout and journaled and I journal a lot. I do a lot of automatic writing. You know, what I was reminded of was that just that morning before I had started to get ready to leave. I was in prayer, right? I was in prayer because I was struggling with a couple other things. I was struggling with really feeling that that presence of God in this moment, that he was there, that he had the resources. I have this really big desire and mission in my heart. I have some pretty big dreams I want to manifest right now. I want to get a lot of support in this book as we get it published and get it out. And I want to grow the audience of this podcast. You know, there's things I want to do with ads and, and really to spread the message of, you know, working with God and being a co-creator with God and healing our hearts and restoring our relationships. Like there's so much I want to share. And when you're just one person, obviously, you know, you can't do everything. You got to build a team around you. And so I have been in the throes of starting to build this team and really expand the team and, and invest, invest lots of money, lots of time, lots of resources. And sometimes when we can be in that place where a lot is pouring out of us, like we're pouring out so much to the people we're coaching, we're pouring out so much on our families, we're pouring out so much content or value in whatever way that looks, right? For me, it's a lot of creative work, but I felt like I've been pouring and pouring and pouring of myself and I was kind of feeling a little bit 
empty, right? And I was like, oh, I need to feel some of you, God. I need to feel some of your strength, some of your structure, some of your support. I need to remember like that what I'm doing is like mattering and you got me and you got this and that you are gonna supply the resources. And you know what was funny was that morning I received a call from a colleague, a friend who I hadn't talked to in months. And he just called me because he wanted to share a vision um, that he's having for a business that he's launching, a, ma a new mastermind that he's launching. And I loved the vision of it. It was so powerful, so great. And it was so aligned to what it had been on my heart to put out. But I was kind of a little bit doubting and stuff like that. And so he called me to not only share his vision, but to let me know how much I had inspired him and those seeds that we planted, right? That seed that I'd planted in previous conversations had really put him into a season of exploration, of fleshing out what this new business model would look like. And now he's getting ready to fully launch it. And he had such conviction and such certainty about himself and such clarity over the vision that he just wanted to call me to say, thank you. Um, for the impact that that influence that you had on me and he wanted to share the vision for me it was such an affirmation that sometimes we are sending things out we're pouring of ourselves and we don't know if it's landing we don't know if there's a ripple effect like is it actually sticking to anything and there's like these seeds right they go into the ground and sometimes we don't see them sprouting for like a while months sometimes years right sometimes weeks but when those seeds are in the ground and we've planted them and we've been pouring water on them, you know, it's kind of like, did anybody notice? Does anyone see what I'm doing? God, did you see what I was doing? And, and the thing is like, yes, he was reminding me that, yes, not only did I see what you're doing, but you are planting seeds in people and you are helping them expand their vision and you're helping them gain clarity. And also the vision I gave for you, I'm giving to a lot of these other leaders. You guys are going on similar paths and you're called to co-create together. And so it was just such an affirmation and confirmation of everything I knew in my heart. But sometimes when we're squeezed, right? When we're in the pressure, we're feeling a little bit alone or we've been pouring, emptying ourselves so much, we can start to doubt these things, right? We start to doubt our paths. Sometimes maybe we start to doubt the support and the resources. And, and for me, I know it's always when there's an imbalance, like too much pouring out, not enough nourishing back in, too much con connection to the noise, too much in the doing, not enough in the being. And I'm human, like still learning how to navigate that just perfect flow state. But it was such a beautiful confirmation to keep going where I'm going and creating what I'm creating and planting the seeds and then letting God do the work of letting those seeds germinate or germinate. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know if that's the right word, um, but really to let them bloom, right? Like your job, my job maybe is just to plant the seeds. And what was cool was right after that call, I was, I received a call from a friend who I hadn't spoken to also in like probably years, to be quite honest, we used to be very close. We kind of grew apart and she called to reach out because she had felt sort of on her heart that the spirit was calling her and she wanted to explore her spirituality. She wanted to cultivate a relationship with God or maybe explore going to church or explore that relationship, but it was so foreign to her. She never knew where to start. She didn't know kind of like, it was very awkward. It was like starting a new dating relationship, right? So she reached out and wanted to speak to me about it. And I thought, wow, you know, because for a long time I was planting these seeds and I just felt like, they're kind of falling on deaf ears sometimes, right? But they were, again, planted. And so he was speaking to me again, saying, see, I am sending the people to you. You are, you are here. You are planting the seed. And not one, but twice. He confirmed that with me. Then the car thing happened. And what was funny about that, as, and by the way, these are all the sort of the revelations I received, the downloads, the insights that came after. Because you, when you're in the moment, everybody wants to know, like, what's the lesson in the moment? Well, sometimes you're just in it. <laughs> and it's not the time for the insight. It's not the time for the revelation or the integration. Oftentimes, these things happen on the outside or on the other side of the event when we're talking about it, we're praying about it, we're writing about it, we're kind of unpacking it with our partner or our coach or just in our own time, maybe on a walk. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, right. Now I see, now I see what I couldn't see while I was in it. 
So I just want to encourage whoever is in those moments right now, those sticky moments where maybe you're feeling discouraged or disconnected or feels like things are coming, you'll see on the other side. And when I woke up and I started journaling and automatic writing, what I realized about that day with the car was that, you know, God really said to me, everything you needed was provided before you could even ask for it, right? You didn't need to ask the EMS guy was there. You didn't need to ask the tow truck was there. You didn't need to ask you had a driver, you know, you didn't even have to rent a car. You like everything you needed, the part was there. And I did feel like I needed that extra day, that extra night to myself, right? I secretly had wanted to take an extra night, but I was like, oh, I got to get back. I've already been gone so many days. But the reality is I needed that extra time. And he was just there to remind me that, Christine, no matter what, when all these unexpected twists and turns happen, number one, I got you. Number two, I know what you need before you can even ask. Like I already have the resources on the way to you before you even know that you need the resources. And it is truly like a parent-child relationship where you kind of know, you just know intuitively, like you can sense your child needs you, right? Like maybe they need you to drop some money in their bank account. Maybe they need you to send them a text. Maybe they need a hug where you just kind of feel their energy. And my kids don't live with me anymore, right? They're older. So they live on their own or, you know, one lives with their dad and up in Canada after we moved my 19 year old. So I get to see them, you know, but they don't live under my roof. I don't walk by them. And so there's a lot of that intuitive mother's knowing that even from the distance, like there's that entanglement, right? That, that is always present where we just know, hmm, something's off. I've got to send a message. And that intuition, that instinct is spot on, Right. And I've experienced it with my kids twice this week myself with two of my kids where I just reached out and they were down, they were feeling off and I could just sense it and they just needed to hear from me, right? They needed that word. And that was really what God was reminding me of. He's like, you know, you're just like, you're a daughter. I know what you need. I know what you want. And I there to deliver to you before you even have to ask. But here's the beautiful thing. He also said to me, but I love it when you ask. I want you to ask. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door will be open, right? Seek and you will find. We're told to ask, to ask from the, the righteous place in our heart, from with a wholesome heart, to ask for we, we desire, what we long for, and delight in, in, in our father, and our spiritual father, when he gives us the desires of our heart, right? Ultimately, it's not so that it can be like, oh, thank you, me, me, me. It's like, so we can be like, thanks, God, like, thanks to our spiritual father, this universal provider of all things, and to continue to glorify that. And it's, he's like, you know, I want you to ask, because I want you to be in communion with me, in conversation with me, right? I want to hear from you. I want to see what's on your heart. I want to hear what's on your heart. I want to be able to counsel you a bit, right? Steer you a bit when maybe you're going off course. I want you to know that I'm here. I want you to know my voice and I want to know your voice. I do know your voice. And it was such a beautiful, beautiful reminder, guys, of really our own parenting relationship with our own children. It is just a mirror, right? Imagine if you just put money in your kid's bank account all the time, right? You know, they need cash, you know, they need this. And you were always just texting them words of affirmation. I love you. You're amazing. We were always hugging them and they just kept brushing you off and going, oh, thanks. I'll take, I'll take, I'll take. And just had this entitlement, just knowing that you would give them everything they needed whenever they wanted it. And they didn't even have to ask for it. What kind of relationship would we have with our own children, if that was the case, right? Will we just keep giving out of this unconditional love bucket? Or would we maybe grow a little resentful? I think in our humanness, honestly, we can say that we might grow resentful, even though we have this cosmic, supernatural creator father that does not grow resentful, still really wants an intimate relationship with us. And I could say this from a mama whose kids have moved out, like, right, once your kids get to be high school, university, and they start having their, really having their own life, and they're not as like, mommy, mommy, attached to you all the time. You know, it's a beautiful thing to see them go out into the world. And it's also bittersweet, right? Because you're like, oh my gosh, my heart grieves. I miss them.
I want to have that intimacy with them and that commun communication with them. So as we kind of circle back, it just reminded me of what a beautiful relationship dynamic this is, that we have access to this unconditional loving father, God, creator who really has in his universal intelligence and his universal ability to at any time at any moment just provide whatever we need whatever we desire more than we could ask for and to do so in the most unexpected twists and turns even before we know right god that does not get resentful but also wants intimacy with us and it's just such a great reminder for me as a daughter that to continue to ask to continue to be in conversation to continue to check the desires of my heart and to dream with God, to invite him into the dreaming process, to be deeply appreciative of every single thing that I've been given because what we appreciate multiplies and also how I'm showing up as a parent for my own children. And, and lastly, I wanna say this in terms of kind of wrapping that whole up, just in case I was questioning it any anymore by any means and I'm gonna pull it up right now this morning as I came upstairs um, to, to do my morning, um, you know, kind of prayer and meditation, I ask for a word. I, I do often ask for a word. Often I'm up here, I'm journaling. Um, and sometimes I'm writing, sometimes I'm praying. But this morning I said, you know, God, give me a word. And I picked up the Bible, which is the ultimate word, right? And sometimes it's a whisper that I hear. Sometimes it's a nudge in my heart. Sometimes I'm on a trail, but often I will pick up the word, the Bible, and just ask God to just speak to me through it. And isn't it interesting that today's verse was Ephesians 3.20. That's where he guided me. And I just want to share this with you because it was such an affirmation that said, now to him, it was a prayer, the whole Ephesians um, 3 you know, down for 20 or so was a prayer. Sorry, verse 20 said, now to him who is able to carry out for his purpose and do super abundantly more than all we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory throughout all generations. That's from the Amplified Bible. But really what is cool is it was a reminder that he is able to carry out his purpose and provide super abundantly more than I dare ask or think infinitely beyond my greatest prayers, hopes, and dreams. That's from the Amplified Bible. You guys, I love the Amplified Bible because it does a lot of like definitions and expansions on certain words. But it brought me back to something I often say. It's like more than I could ask for, more than I need, more than I could ask for, more than I could imagine. I never actually read that verse or it didn't land for me before. But he was reminding me one more time this morning that more than you need, more than you ask for, more than you can imagine is available to you when you trust, when you activate the power that is within you that is granted by me in you and moving through you. Wow, I was like, that is so beautiful. And thank you, just in case I didn't get it the first time, the second time, the third time he sent it again. And so I wanna say that for those of you that are struggling to hear the voice of God or hear the whispers of the spirit, and I hear this a lot, especially in our coaching calls sometimes, you know, I'll have clients that are like, well, I can't hear. God's voice. I can't hear the spirit. Well, sometimes I'm like, maybe he did speak. Is there a chance that he did speak, but you just didn't acknowledge because you've been going, going, going. You've been going so fast that you never slowed down to just reflect, to process, to look back because God doesn't scream, right? Like the spirit doesn't scream. He kind of not, sends us through these experiences. He brings people into our life to speak to us he takes us through experiences and he puts things on our heart. He impresses our heart through prayer or meditation or writing or whatever in whispers. And it requires that we cultivate the stillness and the space for reflection and then listen to what comes through. So if you're someone who is like, you know, God doesn't really talk to me. I would challenge you on that. 
I would challenge you on that. And I would ask you, really, how much time and space do you cultivate for stillness? To just listen, to reflect, to breathe. When you really slow down and breathe and connect to the spirit in speed, to breathe in and just ask, what is it that you want me to know? What is it that you want me to remember? What is it that you're trying to communicate to me now that I've been unwilling to listen to, unwilling to pay attention to, because maybe I've been too busy, right? Too up in my head, too attached to my own plans. So I wanted to say that maybe he has spoken to you and you just haven't slowed down enough to reflect and acknowledge it. So that is so powerful to do that. The other piece of that is, you know, without going into a whole other podcast episode is sometimes he has spoken to us, but we didn't like the answer, right? And I've certainly had this many, many times where I've prayed and prayed and prayed for something like in my past relationship or some business decisions back when I had the studio and like in my heart, in the depths of my soul and my being, like in my bones, I knew the answer, but I didn't like it. I was afraid of it right? The answer that it was time to move on, that this was not the relationship for me, that it was time for me to move into a new calling in the business. Like they were hard because it was things I was attached to, to the past. And I was like, "Mm, okay, well I'll, I'll move, but can I still keep this and get that? It was like, I want my cake and eat it too. Right. And he's like, no, honey, let go of this one thing. This isn't for you. This season is over. This season has run its course. I'm taking you into a new place. But I was like, trying to hold on to two worlds. And so sometimes if we feel like God isn't, you know, speaking to me or the spirit isn't speaking or I'm unclear on where I'm going. Hmm. Are you though? Or do you know? I believe we always know the answer. The question is not, do you know the answer? The question is, are you willing to move in that direction? Are you willing to move in that direction? Are you willing to put down the thing that you're grasping onto and holding onto, right? Are you willing to trust? Whoo, big ones, big questions, right? Are you willing to trust that everything you need will be supplied? That I'm taking you into a new space where it'll be even better, even more than you could ask for or need, even more than you can even imagine. Whoo, even more trust, (laughs) right? And the last thing I want to share around that too is sometimes, you know, the spirit is just quiet because we're in a season of waiting, but not of like impatient waiting. We're in a season of testing, of training, of preparing maybe our character or our spirit, and it's just not time yet. So sometimes we want the next step right away. And sometimes that step is just sit, wait, be still, be quiet, right? It's not time yet. I'm reorganizing things in the atmosphere for you. And man, I can totally relate to this one because I would definitely have classified me myself as a very impatient person. In fact, between my husband and I, he's definitely got the patience award because once I think of something, I'm like, oh, can we execute on that yesterday? Like in my mind, it's already complete. It's done. It's manifested. <laughs> We're reaping the rewards, which is a gift in so many ways because I am able to manifest things quick quickly in my life and take action. I have a lot of faith. I like to act fast often before I have all the details or any kind of plan in place. And I can really get attached to the speed of things. And sometimes all, a lot of times I'm really feeling that, you know, that hand of the spirit, that's actually like kind of, if you guys are, you're not watching me on video right now, but I'm putting my hand on my heart and my chest. That's kind of like, Hey, pull back a little, slow down right? Slow down and savor where you're at. Slow down and savor this moment. Slow down and stop trying to do it all. And just let me organize and reorganize things in the atmosphere for you. And as a matter of fact, this exact quote just popped up on my feed yesterday or the day before. Um, And I just wanted to see real quick if it popped up here so that I can see it. Um, but it was basically that, that was like, just slow down and trust that I am reorganizing things in the atmosphere for you. And that's a hard one. Sometimes I was just seeing if I could find it here so I could share it. 
But as we wrap, you know, I wanted to say the last piece of this is really coming into deep appreciation for where we are. And that was the last piece of my lesson, my little detour of the unexpected twists and turns was my one hour ride in the tow truck with that man. Because what he told me about his life really gave me perspective about how blessed I'm at. I'm at. And also that we can all experience richness and depth and so much joy, regardless of our external circumstances. This man has not had a day off, a holiday off since his child was born and his child is 16, 15 years old. Every Mother's Day, every Father's Day, every Christmas Eve, every New Year's Eve, he has worked. He's on call 24 seven as a tow truck driver. His son rides in the tow truck with him on Christmas Eve and does so and loves it. And he was sharing like how they have these most amazing conversations on how he wouldn't trade his life for the world. And he loves his job and he loves his family. And he gets one weekend off per month, one weekend off per month, one Saturday, Sunday off per month. And the rest of the time he works. And I was just like, whoa, <laughs> what? Wow. And I was thinking, he must be miserable. And the answer was, Christine, no, he's not. He loves his life. And he sat there and he was loving up his wife. He was loving up his kid. He was so grateful. And you know, the stories he told me about the people that he pulled out of car accidents and the work that he got to do as a tow truck driver, flipping cars over, like really some horrific accidents that he was sharing with me and how precious life is that he could not take it for granted. That even though he works three weekends a month and every single holiday, he still loves his life. He loves his wife. He loves his child. And he was the kindest, most gentle man, <laughs> right? And that was another thing. Every single man that was there for me, isn't it interesting that it was all men and it was all the masculine energy. And I do believe that was intentional, not because women can't be, because in that moment, I really was feeling a little bit tender for a few days. And I needed to feel that strength, that masculine strength. Maybe I had moved into a little bit too much of my masculine energy. And I thought it was so interesting that every single person that showed up for me over the course of those two days was in the masculine and they were so gentle and they were so in service. They wanted to make sure that I was okay, that I was protected, that I was provided for. And every single one of them was like, if you need anything, I'm here. And it's such a different view of the masculine today than what it used to be in my previous life, right? My previous life when I didn't trust men where I felt like, okay, they always want to take, I was afraid many times I would be uncomfortable or afraid that they would want something from me or take advantage of me financially or, you know, try to hit on me. I felt so supported, so respected and so well taken care of. And again, that was just another reflection of the masculine heart of God, I believe, that says, I'm here, I wanna take care of you. I'm here to protect, to provide, and to remind you, you know, of just how blessed you are and just of my presence. So I wanted to share this today. You know, this is a, a story day, a perspective shift, and I, whatever you gain from it, I just hope that this story landed for you in some way, some capacity. I feel like there's so many gold gems in here, so many beautiful reminders. So if you're in a season of struggling and maybe you're feeling alone, like put, make your requests known, right? And then be open to see how he shows up for you, to see how he shows up to remind you that you are not alone, that there's this beautiful presence around you all the time wanting to support you and be open to acknowledge it. When you acknowledge it, it keeps showing up. He keeps showing up over and over again, right? Be willing to slow down and reflect. Be willing to pause, right? And unpack some of that and say, thank you. Thank you for the reminders, right? For me to say, God, thank you that you sent not one, not two people to call me, all those people to support me during that day, that you sent me this verse just when I needed it. And by the way, there was another quote that came through my phone that was literally the same message just in case I didn't get it, right? Are you willing to slow down and say thank you? Because they're powerful reminders. And um, yeah, I just wanted to share that story with you guys today. I hope that those things really land for you. This is really what I believe 
it means to walk with the spirit in the spirit and to co-create this way, um, to not be forcing, hustling, pushing things all the time and being extremely disappointed when things don't go our way, but to be able to be a little bit more fluid, a little bit more curious, a little bit more relaxed. And I'm very much in this journey with you guys. You know, there's moments where I'm crushing it and there's other moments where I'm struggling. And uh, in, in my humanness, I can love all the parts. So I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope that this resonated with you. If you are enjoying this podcast, please leave a review, share it with somebody, share it with somebody that you know. And um, yeah, I'll be starting a group initiation soon. If you guys want to learn more about that, you can apply to work with me. Comments are in the show notes. I'm just on fire about helping people co-create amazing relationships and step into their God-centered missions and really get more clarity around their life. Um, and to do so in step with the spirit, man, it is a powerful, powerful experience. So until next time, thank you for being here. Thank you for being in the conversation. Uh, here's to loving fiercely and leading courageously as warriors of the heart. Bye for now.